My name is Saji Bori. I am a fourth year medical student from Washington State University's College of Medicine doing a spine rotation here. Um, and today I'll be giving a presentation on thoracolumbar fractures uh, and I'll also do an overview of uh, the AO spine classification system. So this is a case of a 30-year-old male with a history of IV drug use who presented to the emergency department about five days after a high-speed motor vehicle accident with uh, progressively worsening low back pain. He basically hit an, an uh, embankment at 60 miles per hour and subsequently hit a pole, uh, but he was able to walk home afterwards. Um, uh, on presentation, he denied any weakness or numbness and he didn't have any bowel or urinary incontinence. And he also didn't have any significant uh, past medical history. So on a uh, physical exam, he had some point tenderness over the midline lumbar area, but he uh, didn't have any um, step off over the spinous uh, processes. Um, otherwise, uh, in terms of the rest of the physical exam, it was unremarkable. He had no neurologic deficits that were noted. He had full strength in the upper and lower extremities and uh, normal sensation throughout, and he uh, also didn't have any saddle anesthesia. So over here we have a, a CT scan. Uh, this is a sagittal view. CT scan is uh, demonstrating an L3 burst fracture uh, with about uh, more than 50% loss of vertebral height. And there's also a, some retropulsion noted. Uh, and the radiologist reported it as about eight millimeters of retropulsion. On this view, we have a axial view. Um, also demonstrating the, the burst fracture, just came up here at L3. And then you can also see the retropulsion here into the spinal canal. For here we have a MRI scan. Uh, this is a, a T2 uh, weighted image uh, in sagittal view. You can see the, the narrowing quite nicely here at the L3. Over here is the axial view. You have the spinal cord here and the vertebral body. You can see that retropulsion over here. This is the stir sequence, uh, mainly uh, looking for if there's disruption in the posterior uh, ligamentous complex. It's a good sequence if you, it basically highlights uh, if there's any edema, and that's an indication of uh, posterior, it can be used as an indication for posterior ligamentous uh, disruption, and uh, I wasn't able to appreciate anything on, uh, on this view. Uh, so the plan for this patient was to do a posterior instrumented L2 to L4 uh, fusion and also do a posterior lumbar L3, L4 laminectomy with lateral recess decompression, uh, mainly just to uh, reduce that uh, retropulsed uh, fragment that was uh, uh, basically in the spinal canal. Over here we have the fluoroscopy images, the interoperative. Um, you can see on, on the left-hand side, we didn't put a pedicle screw uh, at the L3 level, uh, and that was mainly just uh, because if we decide to do a subtotal corpectomy down the road, we want to make sure that it's uh, amenable for that. Over here we have the post-operative CT scan. And you can see here that the let me, one second here. We basically had almost a uh, near complete resolution of the, uh, that retropulse fragment uh, with good alignment. And here's the axial view. <coughs> All right. Uh, now I just want to go over the AO spine classification system. So there's three components here that you're looking for, the morphology of the fracture, whether the patient has any uh, neurologic signs, and also if there's any ligamentous injuries or comorbid conditions. 
So there's type A, these are your compression injuries, type B is your distraction injuries, and type C are your uh, displacement or dislocation injuries. Uh, and they're, they each have their own uh, subtypes. So type, type AO, um, that's the minor non-structural fracture. So that's fractures either through the spinous processes or through the uh, transverse process. Uh, but the overall structural integrity of the vertebral column is, is intact. Um, A1 is your uh, classic wedge compression uh, fracture. A2 is a coronal split. Uh, and then A3 is your incomplete uh, burst uh, fracture, and then A4 is your complete burst. So when you get to the distraction injuries, this is where you get a disruption of the posterior ligamentous complex. So B1 is your uh, chance fracture. B2 is where uh, it's your, your flexion distraction injury. So uh, the anterior column fails under compression, the posterior column fails under tension. Uh, and then B3 is your hyperextension um, uh, injury with uh, disruption of the anterior longitudinal ligament. And uh, type C is your uh, displacement and dislocation. So I, I included this just for completion. There's a, a algorithm that you can follow for uh, to, to determine the morphologic classification. Uh, so now for the other components, uh, neurology and uh, the modifiers. So you're uh, checking to see if the patient is neurologically intact. If, if so, that you'd uh, give the patient an N0. Um, if there's complete spinal cord injury, that would be an N4. Uh, and the modifiers are basically included. So for M1, um, if it's sometimes it's kind of hard to tell if the posterior ligamentous complex is disrupted or not. And if that's the case, uh, you would give the patient an M1. Uh, and the other times, um, patients may have other factors that prevent them from uh, being able to go to uh, to the OR, such as like polytrauma, um, and uh, th then in that case, you would give that patient an M2. If they have other com comorbidities, such as ankylosing, spondylitis, or burns, uh, you would also give that patient an M2. So for our case, uh, since uh, it's at it's at L3 burst fracture, you classify L3. It's A3 because it's an incomplete burst. Uh, N0 because the patient's neurologically intact. Uh, also included the TLUX score, which helps determine uh, if the patient is a good uh, surgical candidate uh, uh, based on the three, three things that you're looking for. The morphology, uh, the integrity of the posterior longitudinal complex, um, and that's uh, shown here, uh, basically the ligamentum uh, flavum, the facet joint capsule, and the interspinous ligament and supraspinous ligament. And also, uh, you're looking at neurologic signs. So if you have a score greater than four, um, then uh, Typically, uh, surgery can, can be can be uh, discussed and is an option. Uh, also, uh, in closing, I just wanted to talk about the McCormick uh, load sharing classification. This this was developed to kind of help you decide if. Uh, posterior fixation alone is enough, or if the patient uh, also needs uh, anterior stabilization. So you're looking at uh, a comminution, um, apposition of the fragments, and then the kyphotic correction. So if you have a score of uh, greater than 70, uh, greater than seven, excuse me, uh, then uh, vertebrectomy or uh, corpectomy with uh, anterior stabilization is uh, recommended. But it's important to take account that uh, you know there's other factors that uh, that play a role here, such as the patient's young. Um, and other, if they have other comorbid uh, conditions, for instance. So I just want to take a second and just say thank you uh, for this opportunity to present here. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them now. And here are my references.